set up. <laughs> All right, and then I am gonna click over to a share screen here and we're gonna get Richard Noblet ready to go as he is going to be our first presenter today. And here we are, there's the beautiful graphic honoring the class of 2020. All right, Richard Noblet. Thank you guys. All right, I'm gonna do the magic click to get to the next slide. Before we venture into some incredible ideas from some educational industry experts on how to honor the senior class of 2020, I hoped we could spend five minutes reflecting on some scraps of advice to consider. This is from the perspective of a district director who supports three middle schools, two junior high schools, three high schools, and is going through this unusual process with them as we speak. I'm also someone who's been actively involved in student activities with CADA for 17 years. I'm also someone who's the father of a current senior at Chino Hills High School. Shout out to the Huskies. As you make decisions based on the community you serve and for the students you pour your heart into working with every day, know that some of these ideas will work and some will not. We hope to share ideas for you to take back to your teams and do what you can with what you have. As you do that, here are six things that everyone can consider. The first thing to consider is to allow time and create space for the voice of your students. Magic click. In hard times, it's often too easy to make grown up decisions without their input. These conversations are difficult, they're emotional, and it's important to remember that every idea is a good idea when you're doing a brain dump. It's also important to make sure that you activate and listen to all groups of students, not just your ASB students, not just your academically excellent students, not just your students that are the most vocal. It's key to ask, to listen, and then to listen some more. This is our opportunity to empower our students and use this as a growth opportunity to be creative. And I've been working with a number of students over the last couple of weeks and it's incredible how many great ideas they have. The second thing to consider is what I'm gonna call the itties. When you come up with this brain dump, you need to look at the reality of what is possible and what is not possible. You need to look at the affordability of what you want to do. Make sure that it is something that not only you can support, but your district will be able to support. And Richard, I'm sorry yes. to interrupt you. No. Um, I have now, uh, it says 8 p.m., but it's going to be ASAP. Um, I have now uh, pasted the link from middle school into the chat. So the, the best thing to do would be to highlight, copy and paste that, uh, that Zoom code, that, uh, that URL where it says join Zoom meeting or you can write down the meeting ID and password. And middle school, we're gonna head over to our separate meeting and we'll see you over there soon. And I will just give it a couple of minutes while people start to leave the room. I can see people are leaving slowly. I don't want them to uh, miss out on this. They can always see this pre-recorded um, tomorrow, um, but we wanna make sure they get to their room. So now we should just have high school people here. Um, although this first part is relevant to middle school and high school. So um, continuing with the things to consider, we wanna make sure that we are looking at this through an equity lens. We wanna make sure that we are being inclusive of all of our students. Um, for example, if you're gonna digitize something, do your students have access? Um, if something is going to need to be paid for, do your students have the means to be able to do that? And you need to avoid um, adversity and um, challenges um, as you consider the itties. From a district perspective, um, you wanna make sure you are considering the liability of what you are going to do. There's some great ideas out there about opening up drive-in theaters or doing a drive-through of town. Please include your risk management, please include your local police departments in doing this because again, there are liability issues with doing that type of thing like any parade that happens in your hometowns. And of course, you want to consider the accountability of who's gonna do the work. As ASB directors, as leaders in your community, it's way too easy to take on way too much. You all know this and you cannot do it on your own. So you need to start dividing up the work and making sure that there's an accountability checklist when it comes to putting together whatever it is you're going to put together. 
The third thing to consider is um, a simple saying, and this is a philosophy. Um, it's the um, yes philosophy rather than the no philosophy. Um, instead of saying no because, say yes if. And just remind your students that no is short for not yet. It's important that you don't discuss what cannot be done, but rather focus on what can be done. And just remember that some things can be substituted, whether digitally or on paper, most cannot. You need to make sure that you consider your time needs, um, consider your time, your team's time, and the people that are involved in this as you pull whatever it is together, but focus on not, no being short for not yet. The fourth thing to consider is, and this is probably the most important consideration out of the six, is to avoid downplay. Um, our students deserve, need, and want a real graduation ceremony. This is a huge deal to every single one of them, whether they say it is or not. Document the reasons why this is important to move forward as a district in unity. It's important that all the high schools in the district are, um, do the same thing and have clear communication and transparency. Don't try and substitute a graduation. It's very important that you give them their moment. The next thing to consider, number five, is to use the word postpone, not cancel. We have to react to the short term. That means May and June for most of us. We have to plan for the long term, which could be July through December. Please do not try and digitally replicate something unless it's going to be epic. Putting a graduation in the form of a video is not good enough for our kids. And I want you to consider if it was your graduation or your child's graduation. Um, I can relate to this because, um, as you heard, I just recently graduated from USC. I'm supposed to walk across the stage on May 13th. I'm not going to get to do that. Now, I'm not comparing my three years of toil and expense to a 13-year journey for a senior. Their graduation is far more important. So we wanna make sure that if USC is going to postpone, not cancel, then we do the same thing. Um, it's not okay to cancel our graduations. And the final thing to consider before we get to the experts is use virtual placeholders. Um, this is a term that allows for the rite of passage and closure with digital recognition on the day or the week of the you know, preliminarily scheduled event. So this is okay to do. You can enhance it with yard signs, with banners, with digital content, but it's a digital placeholder. It's a virtual placeholder. It's not a replacement for the real thing. You need to use that time to provide hope for the future moment that you're going to allow to happen by postponing, not canceling. And now we're going to move to the incredible ideas to honor the senior class of 2020 with the resident expert. Jeff, back to you. Thank you, Richard. Uh, we're going to switch over to someone who has uh, dealt with a lot in the last year and uh, the hits just keep piling on, but she has taken it in stride. We're going to turn it over to Stacy Martin from Paradise High School. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, my name is Stacy Martin. I'm from Paradise. And um, as you probably know, we have um, had our fair turn. Background stuff. Um, could you guys please mute? Thank you. Um, we experienced the campfire last year. And so my kids have had their share of uh, having to deal with um, adversity and having to resilient um, it's especially disappointing this year just because last year's seniors did get a ton of support um, the outpouring was incredible um, and this year's seniors are with everybody else and so they experienced kind of a rough junior year and now senior year is, um, is uh, I would say equally or even harder uh, just because one of the ways that I kept us together last year was um, by bringing us together. And we don't have that option this year, so it's especially hard. Um, one of the things we've done uh, so far is my class of 2020 kids. I have 115 uh, graduating seniors. My leadership group came to me and they had seen a video that um, the uh, Wheatland Union High School uh, 
ASB put out and they really liked it. And so they wrote a script um, and um, there's a link um, next to number one. If you want to click on that for a second, we'll watch like 20 seconds of it just so you guys get an idea of what it, what it's about. Oh. Looks like we're not going to hear the. Oh, you can you not? Yeah, I can't hear it. You can't hear it, Mike. Uh, well, sorry. <laughs> it was working before we started. So, um, it's okay. So the link is there. Um, it's on Facebook. Um, it's been really, it's been a wonderful thing for both my kids and for the community because it's a very positive message. Um, it's a message that's encouraging the community and their, the, body to socially distance and to be at home and um, it's encouraging them to stay together and to remember that you know, through this together and it's just a really positive message and so my um, ASB president and a couple of my kids wrote the script and then we reached out to other students and um, had them record little pieces and it's you know it's it's just been a really really positive thing for them they feel really good about it um, we have the local news who's going to run it. Um, it's just been a really, really positive, uh, positive experience. Um, the second thing that we, we've done is surveys. Um, I've put out um, two so far just because, as Richard mentioned, we really want to know what the students want. And he's absolutely right. They want a graduation. I mean, they really, really want graduation over everything else. Of course, they want prom and they want the other senior activities, but the graduation is primary. Even if it has to be, you know, in December or, you know, even in the spring sometime, they really, really want that. And so I'm using that language in my, in my uh, district administration is using that language, saying, um, you know, using if and, you know, when and, um, you know, postponing language versus this is going to replace um, a graduation later. Um, the other thing we're doing is senior t-shirts. Um, that was part of the survey that we put out. Um, it's kind of funny. I gave them three options and I literally got 30% in each option. <laughs> and so I think um, we're not going to do any kind of great, uh, you know, huge class picture with everybody. So I'm going to let students choose the shirt that they want. Um, prom, we talked about it a lot. I talked about it a lot with my leadership students. Um, we have a, a venue reserved for July 25th. Um, obviously, if things open up, um, you know, I'm hopeful uh, we'll reschedule it for July 25th. If not, um, the, the, the one upside is that last year's prom, because we did have so much support, uh, was free. And so we had like 400 students at our prom, which is pretty epic for us. And so I would say the vast majority of the seniors this year at least got to go to last year's prom. And that's something. Um, the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna offer them prom um, next year um, with a guest pass. So um, they don't have to come with a current student to come. They can just fill out a guest pass as if they were coming from another school with a student that goes to our school. So if they fill out a guest pass, they can come to prom next year. Um, if it doesn't work out on the 25th. Again, we keep saying if because we're not sure, um, you know, what's going to happen. Um, we're doing 30 days of graduates. So every day we're posting three or four graduates on all our social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, with a little... Uh, with a little bio about where they're going to school and you know what they feel their, their greatest accomplishments have been. Um, I just created a Google Doc and I emailed it to all my seniors and they filled out what they want, what they want uh, highlighted and recognized. And so we just started that today actually. Um, and then graduation op options. I have kind of a detailed um, description of what we're doing. Uh, we're doing a three-pronged um, process. Uh, we're starting with appointments. So we're going to do, um, we're going to set up a stage, we're going to set up a sound system, we're going to have uh, a board member or two there, we're going to um, have, you know, set it up just like it's graduation. And then we're going to have students sign up six per hour. And their families can come. They'll have to, we have a big, you know, bleachers, right? And so the families can come. They'll be in the bleachers. We haven't figured out a number exactly on um, what we're going to limit in terms of how many family members can come. 
but six per hour and um, they uh, will have boxes taped on the field where they'll have to stay in those boxes until the, they're allotted time. And uh, each senior will have their name called, they'll walk across the straight stage, they'll pick up a diploma holder, they'll move their tassel, and then we'll have a photographer there uh, documenting all of that. Um, the families will give, be given a graduation program, um, and then we'll have staff um, volunteer to hopefully help maintain it a little bit. Our biggest concern is just our students, you know, maintaining social distancing and our families maintaining social distancing. So we'll have to have a lot of staff there helping us to, um, you know, to, to make sure that that, that happens. And um, I just had a meeting today with uh, my district office folks and my site admin, and um, this is the direction we're going. Um, you know, if nothing changes, but again, it's the whole if thing. If if something changes, then we're we're going to prepare for a regular graduation if if we're able to do that. Um, then, and we're going to do that the week before. Now we have 115 graduates, so we're going to be able to do that in about a week. We figure six an hour. We'll do six hours a day. Um, in about a week, we'll have all all students have gone through the appointment graduation, and then the week of graduation or maybe the day before we haven't really figured this out yet and it'll also depend on how much is allowed at that time um, we want to do a senior class car parade uh, we have a huge main drag in town um, we're going to do uh the uh the yard signs with kids names on them we're going to have that going up and down the, the the our main drag is called skyway so we're going to have all of those on Skyway, and then uh, we're going to have kids and their parents and their families in the cars, deck out their cars, um, and then coordinate a parade going down the Skyway and then back up around past the high school and then back over to the Skyway. So um, my principal was talking today about contacting a local uh, radio station and having them um, broadcast the names being announced because we'll have a sound system it's going to start like in a shopping center and um so the speaker system the the sound system will be in the shopping center and we're hoping we can have it broadcast through the car radios as they go through and um i just i was at i just happened to be in paris during world cup last year and it was incredible and it was just people driving and honking and waving and there was nobody on the streets there was no parade it was just celebration and so that's what I'm picturing is just the kids and the families really celebrating. Again, our biggest concern is the social distancing piece and making sure that people stay safe and stay in their cars. And uh, that's going to be our biggest challenge. Um, my superintendent did talk to the, um, the Paradise Police and he did, he did talk to the town council and they're, they're interested in helping us. But again, it just depends on whether or not it's going to be something that's allowed um, through the state and through the county too. Um, and then the last thing is, um, we're going to video all of this. We're going to video the, the um, appointments. We're going to video our senior speeches. We're going to um, video the car parade. And we're going to put it all together. And so that's what's going to be broadcast on the day of graduation, um, is a video that kind of encompasses um, all of that. So that's what we've come up with so far um, if you click on the link under detailed info it kind of goes step by step through the whole plan um, and that's what we have all right thanks a lot stacy uh, we are going to move to our next presenter margie reed coming to us from exeter high school margie okay hello everybody hey. all right so <laughs> Brody just said hi, Margie. He's very excited. Hi, Brody. How are you? <laughs> Thank you. All right. So I don't see my slide up yet. Is it up yet? Oh. Hey, Polly. Yeah, your slide is up now. Okay, there we go. So, um, and you're going to find that we're probably all going to say pretty much the same, the same thing um, as we're all thinking. There's only so much you can do for seniors. And um, you know, virtual graduations, drive through parades, postponing. Um, some of the things that we're doing on the short term, of course, are uh, senior nights, uh, like for sports. Some of the, I'm a coach and I, I coach three sports. Um, and I know for, for athletes, uh, the spring sports um, for seniors, some of that was really important. And that getting cut short was really hard for them. So we are, 
uh, celebrating those senior nights. And then um, we're posting those on Instagrams. We made videos of coaches talking about their seniors. And, and we're, we're little by little putting that together. Um, of course, you know, the yard signs, I put some pictures up. The yard signs, if kids got signed anywhere, we're posting those. Um, the biggest thing that I have found that has helped with the community, because I don't know about you guys, but as soon as school started getting closed, parents went on Facebook, went on Instagram and started acting like the schools were doing nothing for their kids. And it was really hard to see because we're behind the scenes and we're, we're working hard. We're trying to figure out what's going to happen next. Creature, I forget what it's called. And um, a somebody's oh, TV is going off. Um, so anyways, um, we started to, um, to, we had, you know, our district told us don't respond, don't say anything. We just are going to, you know, co communicate and, and get it. But our district was a little slow in communicating. And so we finally were able to start communicating with parents. We were doing senior surveys. Um, but one of the things, Jeff, if you, uh, I'm just going to focus on the virtual graduation because I, I really like what a Jostens is doing. And this is free to anybody. You don't have to be a Jostens school. Um, it is code uh, password uh, protected, but if you just call up a Jostens rep, they'll give you the code. It's, it's no big deal. But what I like about this is they have a, um, they give you like the pomp and circumstance for free. Um, they give you the commencement speeches. Uh, they have all these really cool, like Mike Smith Live, Julia Garcia. They have all these like um, people that they work with, uh, sporting people, uh, NASCAR speakers and stuff like that that you can use if you want to. Um, they do a presentation of graduates and I was still on the other one. Uh, presentation of graduates and they do a turn the tassel that you can send a video to your parents. Uh, toss the cap and they're actually putting a toss the cap a video together for the 2020 class so they ask all the uh, graduates to um, uh, do a selfie of themselves or have somebody videotape them tossing their cap and then um, there they have a country music guy putting together a song just for 2020 that's going to be released and all of this is royalty free all the templates are for free. They they just give it to you because they want to help. Go ahead and you can go to the next slide. And it's they just kind of give you all this information, which when we first started planning the drive-through pickup, you know, some of those things that you're like, oh, how's that gonna work? Or well, what do you do? They kind of give you ideas on on how to go. Go ahead and go to the next one. Um, and then a parade pickup. A stage and I think we are looking at doing the stage thing after we do our virtual graduation is to um, go into the gym and um, have kids come in at a certain time so that they can get their picture taken um, getting their diploma it doesn't mean it's their graduation but at least they'll have that memory with them I mean, I, and I and I like um, what said like it's it's just a memory it's it's a, like a placeholder until we get to the graduation in July and we are when we talked to our seniors they wanted a graduation you can go ahead and go to the next one um, and then there's additional resources that they they give you because um, you know a lot of kids bought the announcements and things like that and they give you um, it's it's a uh, it's a senior virtual graduation for seniors is what this is called. And so you can get this and I put the uh, link in there and then um, you can also, um, it'll be on the, the thing and you can call any Justin's person and they'll give it to you. And they have a video that helps out with it too. And that tells you about it. Go ahead and go to the next one. So here's some templates that they use that you, it's all PowerPoint. And basically, you send these out to your seniors, they get to fill out what they want to. And this is what you can use when you're doing the commencement. Um, and then um, it's some stuff like information that you want to send, send out like, hey, this is when we're having the parade. This is when we're doing the drive through. Go ahead and go to the next one. 
And then um, they will help you. They have a Zoom. They, each of the reps got a thousand. Um, no, we're not, they're not charging anybody. I was on a Zoom call with them today. Uh, they're not charging any money. It does not cost. And I don't think Curve Jones is, is charging anybody either. I think these companies realize how important this is to us and they want to help in any way that they can. You know, th this is their livelihood too. And then they know how important this is. Well, well, I know for sure Jostens because I was on online with them today. If you can get me back to my regular, um, my, yeah. So, so those are the things that Exeter High School is looking to do. Um, and the, jo the Jostens rep for me is Keith Guthrie. And he's been amazing. Um, and I just felt like for us, we gave our graduates in our, um, our survey, we gave them all these options. And then we gave them a combination of options. And um, we're hoping, to, we're still waiting to get all those results back. But we are planning, I mean, we might be doing everything on this list. And um, we, don't, we have 204 graduates, so yes, we're a smaller school. We, we're 10,000. We're a small community. So we have the luxury of being able to do a lot of these things. We have one main drag. And, um, but it, it is pretty, pretty amazing. And what Jocelyn's did say was even for the bigger schools, uh, if you have your own, um, like if you do streaming, if you do your own platform, you could get, do a lot of this on that pretty easily so um that's those are the things that we're that exeter is doing so thank right. you thanks margie and uh yeah You're there's welcome. a lot of going on in the in the chat um herf jones offering similar programs so if you're a herf school or a Johnson school just be sure to reach out to your reps and find out what they have to offer and how they can tie in with you and how they can support you because both companies are super super into <laughs> supporting all of us and especially with everything going on. Uh, we're gonna rotate over to Jill Mortensen now from Ripon High School. She's got a list of fabulous ideas, just like her presentations at convention. So Jill, it's all yours. Jimmy, very nice. Hold on, come here. Okay, so um, what I'm going to go over this evening are some ideas that we're doing at Ripon High. Um, the meeting I'm in. Kind of adapting and changing um, our current events that we would normally be doing so yeah. that we can still promote positivity on our campus. Sit right here. Can press you? mute if you haven't already. Press mute, please, so we can hear this. Thank you. Um, just as a reference, my Instagram and the Facebook page that we run along with my website are at the top. So if you need more ideas or would like to see what I'm talking about, those are some references for you. Our yearbook um, advisor is Fabulous. She has been working really hard, created a Google form, reached out to the senior parents in asking them to fill out um, basic information about their senior graduate, and email a photo, and we've been pushing out senior spotlights, which I've seen a lot of um, in our area, but also nationwide to support um, our seniors and kind of highlight each one. We are doing two a day during the work week. Um, and it's just kind of nice to see our kiddos and um, again, honor and highlight um, the fact that they are gonna be graduating. We do an event each year called The Grateful Graduate. And, sorry. Um, and a senior has the opportunity to write a letter to a teacher um, from the start of when they were in school, kindergarten, all the way through to their senior year that made a huge impact on their life. Um, traditionally, they dress up in their cap and gown and we surprise the teacher interrupting class and they walk in and they read that letter to them. It's a wonderful, beautiful moment. Um, I absolutely love doing it. And I did not want to see this event disappear um, for our campus. So we adapted and my music teacher is um, got all the equipment. He's wonderful. He jumped on with me and we are creating podcast versions of the seniors reading their letters to acknowledge that teacher that made an impact in their life. Um, it's just verbal through so, uh, through uh, social media, through voice, rather than in person. 
Our college reveal event is something where the kids are signing, uh, very similar to an athlete where they sign to go to a school. We do college reveal where the kids reveal, we have a runway and a balloon arch, what college, what education, what trade school, what military they're choosing to go into. We can't do that in person this year, so we're going to take it and go digitally. Students are filling out a Google form, sharing information about what school they're gonna to commit to, um, what degree they're interested in pursuing, and then they're emailing me a picture of themselves either in the college shirt itself, holding a pennant or maybe a sign that they have created so that we can still show um, that they are wanting to pursue education past high school. Um, the cap and gown drive through is gonna be happening next week. Uh, my students want their cap and gowns, understandably. We were set to give them out the week after we shut down. Unfortunately, we couldn't get them to them. So what we've decided to do for safety purposes is to do a timed schedule ABC order, um, half hour time slots for kids just to drive around um, in front of our school, pick up. Our Justin's rep is coming to the school campus to troubleshoot any potential issues that we may have. Um, and that's where they will be getting their tassels um, based on academics. Um, some of our students will be getting stoles, our valedictorian, salutatorian, so on and so forth. A new idea that my senior officer team and I um, are going to try is called the Words of Wisdom. They're one minute messages from seniors who are dressed in their cap and gown in front of their house. Um, we want them to decorate their door. I, I stole that idea from another advisor. It was on a Zoom call a few days ago and, and I liked that idea. And it's just basically um, positivity, uh, what graduation means to them, what it means to uh, move on with their lives. And, and we created an Instagram page that's solely for these videos. Anybody can go and watch them, but the highlight, the spotlight, if you will, will be on the members of our senior class. We have about 205 graduates. My goal is to have all 205, um, but you know we have to get in contact with those who may not hear about it if they, if they don't know or encourage them that it's okay to, to do so. And again, just spreading positivity. Um, graduation ideas, very similar to what you've heard, virtual, uh, maybe a mini graduation where again, you're doing alphabetically 50 per, you know, determining bodies and how many can, can be in a room or in a setting or spacing. Those are all questions we don't have answers to. And within my community, um, they pretty much have said we want the actual traditional graduation, so that will be our goal in the end. And then just on a side note, just to share with um, activities directors and how you're handling leadership and finishing your year strong, um, one of the things that we do is the banquet, as I'm sure many um, different organizations do. We are gonna be doing ours virtually where we've invited the students, their parents, teachers and staff that would normally be invited to the banquet, um, and then we're just going to have this wonderful Zoom call sharing information and awards and highlights and fun times throughout the year. Um, students of mine who are in the program for four years receive stoles that they can wear at graduation. So those will be presented to them during that banquet. And also one of the traditions we do in my program is senior farewells, where during the class period, a senior can write notes to every single person in the class or groups of kids to say their goodbyes and what ultimately leadership has meant to them. And we are also doing those through Zoom um, and virtually. So, so we're holding on to some of the traditions we still do, even though the, there's so much distance between all of us. And that's kind of what we're doing at Rip and High. And hopefully uh, through more Zoom calls um, and more research, we'll be coming up with more creative ideas to help our kiddos and celebrate and love them all. All right, Jill, thank you so much. Um, we are gonna head into our final presenter right now. Let's do something. If you have a burning question for either Richard, Stacy, Margie, Jill, or our next presenter, go ahead and throw your question now into the group chat. If you ask something earlier, it's buried way up there. So just throw it in there now. If you have a burning question that you wanna ask, we'll have a brief Q&A session right after our final presenter, who is Mr. Derek Sage from SOS Entertainment. Derek, it's all yours. Thank you. Well, I uh, very much appreciate you guys uh, all coming together. I know this means a ton to uh, the students and we've been uh, working hard basically ever since coming back from the CATA convention. Uh, I feel like we were, and I'm sure many of you as well, were very uh, blindsided by all of this. We were so busy uh, prepping for the convention that uh, we felt a little kind of unprepared for just how big this whole thing would be in regards to uh, the end of the year events. So. 
Um, just a little background, uh, SOS Entertainment, like Jeff Culver said, we did the entertainment on Thursday and Friday night. Uh, we work with about 130 schools throughout uh, California and Nevada. And um, came back from the CADA convention and started uh, noticing that these things were getting more and more serious. First thing to fall off were proms. And so one of the questions that um, a lot of our clients and a lot of schools have had for us is, what options do we have for prom? And I know we're kind of running out of time, so I won't get too deep into the kind of um, the psychology aspects of why I don't think um, there is a good prom alternative out there, unfortunately. And um, that's coming from someone who's already streamed online and we have um, another uh, virtual prom, if uh, you guys can remember this website, virtualprom.live is another organization. Um, they're not in California, but they reached out to us about uh, DJing one of their virtual prom nights. So that's virtualprom.live and we'll get that link shared up with you. So there's some online dances, but it's really missing all of the main elements that a student um, needs when they're going to an event. You know, they need that interaction with the people next to them. They need that entertainment that's, a, that's in front of them and kind of bouncing in between those two things. It just doesn't work well online there really is no substitute online for it now i know there's kind of some celebrity um attraction to uh, or some mystique and appeal to celebrities doing these online prompts but what we've noticed as well is that um it, you're not going to find very many students tuning into that or dancing in their living room or finding that it's a good alternative so that brings up to uh brings up kind of my um lead into i think what seems to be the coolest idea and it's up on the slide here um, that we've heard and this is not our idea but we fully back this if it is possible to pull off. Um, and this kind of, um, I guess I can, I, I can um, kind of preface this with, I think the word of the year or one of the words of the year, you know, I guess one of them would be pandemic. That's kind of an, a, a bad word, but um, essential, you know, if you Google the word essential, sometimes there's these almost kind of funny phrases like, are you essential? Is uh, one of the results that I saw when I Googled the word uh, essential and how much it's being used and trending. And so there's this conversation, I think, that um, we're all having um, both businesses and admin and, and I guess including students of what really do you deem to be essential? What has to happen? And so there was this quote that uh, I have on this, um, this slide here where a student had said, I just want my family to see I got handed a diploma. And, and I don't know, you know what essential ingredients exactly go into that, but I envision some sort of uh, stage. I envision a podium. I envision, I envision a... Uh, um, a diploma being handed from uh, a respected admin to a student. And so if that's what you are deeming to be essential, we just wanted to um, be a part of this little brainstorming session here and say we're here to help you. Um, most of the information's on the slide. I know we're kind of running out of time, so um, you can go back and reference this. But uh, this idea is not our idea. Like I said, I think it's kind of grown out of these um, drive-in church scenarios that we're seeing throughout the country. Uh, where these churches that had access to equipment, big sound systems and trailer stages and LED walls, they have effectively put on some really amazing worship services. Um, and so if you were to Google, go to the image section and, and look up um, drive-in church, or if you were to look in drive-in graduation, there's a lot of, a lot of information that's starting to trend. Um, there are definitely districts throughout the country that are doing this drive-in graduation idea. You know, does it work? Uh, yes, I do think it would work. Each state's gonna have different mandates. Uh, will it be easy? Definitely not something that could be slapped together without a lot of um, support. And so just some of the bullet points there, you could do it daytime, nighttime. Uh, you would want to use what's called an FM transmitter or maybe even get one of the local colleges or one of the local radio stations to use their, um, to, to interrupt their normal scheduled broadcast to broadcast uh, the audio that's, um, you know, that's for all of the emceeing that happens over um, the podium and such. Uh, so just a couple last bullets here and I'll wrap up. Um, I think there's a lot of great opportunities for, like I said, radio, TV, businesses, government sponsorship that could help mitigate some of the cost with this and also just kind of bring the community together in this really cool feel good story. Um, you could schedule multiple schools and in one of the districts we're speaking with in Carlsbad, they're interested in doing this in the shopping mall parking lot because the city of Carlsbad owns the parking lot of the mall, not Westfield. And, um, they uh, want, would like to do middle schools and high schools and just kind of rotate days and get through the whole thing in a matter of a couple of weeks. Um, you, would, you would need to utilize, as was said earlier uh, by um, some of the other presenters, 
to involve your police departments and involve uh, volunteers because there would be um, somewhat of a mountain of logistics. But um, we just want to make sure that if this is falling under the essential category and if uh, any of you out there are trying to make this happen in the window before students go away or before it becomes kind of history. And, and that's what I'm concerned about with proms is I don't, I also don't, I don't want to be a naysayer, but I don't really see proms working um, next year for some of the seniors. I think it's a great alternative. I think it's a great option. Uh, and I think some will definitely go to it. But, um, you know, if you feel like graduation uh, is essential and needs to happen before May 30, 30th or something like that, then we would love to help you in any way that we can. Um, so yeah, there's some information there and, um, yeah, I'll just, uh, leave it at that. Thank you guys so much for putting this all together and, um, yeah, doing this, um, in your precious time at home and, and doing this on behalf of the kids. I know it means a lot and, uh, we would love to continue to kind of curate and disseminate some of this best information. And, and I do know that the students, um, they're all hoping to make something happen for graduation. So good on you for doing that. All right. Thanks, Derek. Appreciate it. Um, we have a great question here from uh, Jill Bentley. I'll throw this out to uh, Richard, Stacy, Margie, and you, you want to jump in. Uh, she asks, if your admin has cut you, meaning ASB, out of decision making, how can we approach them and or the district to hear our ideas? I have heard this from a couple of friends who kind of feel like they've been left out of the discussions. Um, what would be your take on that? Richard, you're an administrator, so perhaps yeah. you've got a, a perspective uh, from that angle. I'm part, part of the darker side. So. Um, <laughs> The first thing that you have to do is get together with the other ASB directors in your district or the people that are putting on the graduations. And um, my suggestion would be have a unified voice that includes student voices and meet with whoever is your supervisor, whether that's the director of student achievement, whether that is the assistant soup of ed services, whatever it is, and start there. And if they're not willing to budge, then um, use the power of student voices, use the power of parent voices, and meet with the superintendent. And if that doesn't work, um, and, and some people jump to this last stage, and I don't think you should go here unless you absolutely have to, um, talk to board members and talk to the press. But I don't recommend that as being the first step because you're skipping a lot of levels with that. I would suggest that that has to be a worst case scenario. Um, and it could be a question you pose to your superintendent if it even gets that far. Are you willing to have a headline on the front page of the LA Times that says school district deny students the right to graduate after 13 years of working hard towards their graduation? And something like that is powerful enough to maybe have people start making different decisions. Um, you know, be empowered, use your student voices, use your team um, as a district and um, try and do it the right way and in the right steps. Um, certainly don't jump ahead of, you know, those intermittent steps and go straight to a board member. That's just going to tick people off. Right. That's going to make enemies for you. For sure. Um, I just lost it. Um, uh, Suzanne Wolfolk suggested inviting your superintendent and principal to your ASB Zoom calls. Let them hear the kids directly. Yeah, that's that's a great suggestion, mm -hmm. Suzanne. Um, and just remembering that keeping the student voice is so important in what's going on. Um, I think a lot of times we, as adults, we feel like we know exactly what is going to be best for those kids, but um, we need to make sure we're talking to them and figuring out what it is that their vision is as well and trying to honor that as much as we possibly can. And I know it's, sometimes it's just not realistic um, based on the current situation and circumstances, but um, getting the ideas uh, from the kids and, and then trying to follow through as best you can is super helpful. Um, it is a 756. Scott Bakovich just rejoined us. He wanted to jump in. Scott, that was perfect timing, right really? as I said your name. Yeah, there you are. Uh, Scott was actually uh, talking on our middle school session over with Ron, and I think he just wanted to say hi, and uh, you've got something uh, available you're kicking off with involved that you're providing to everybody starting. Yeah, so tonight. I'll throw the link literally right now. Actually, let me see if I can do this. Here we go. I'll throw the link into the chat right now. Everyone can click it. Um, Hopefully that went live. I'm kind of in the middle school chat still as well. Did that go through? <laughs> yes, it's here. Okay, great. Sorry. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so uh, 
one question we've been getting a lot of as we've been putting out resources and activities is, hey, like, what do we do next? Like, what does this actually look like? Um, to help train our leaders understand what their activities look like right now and what they could look like when they get back. Um, and so I naturally am off the road for the first time ever. So we decided <laughs> to do something about it. So we're actually launching this tomorrow. We wanted to give a sneak peek tonight. Um, we're calling it In Session. Uh, it is entirely free. They're literally free. Uh, all you have to do is give us your email. That way I know where to send the videos. It is a weekly video series. It's going to be four weeks long um, for you and more importantly, um, to help train your leadership students. Each week will be a five to 10 minute video that we send out uh, Monday morning. They watch the video and then more importantly, the videos are directly um, geared to helping your students A, create activities for right now and B, figure out what activities look like when we get back and how we engage everyone and create community when community might look differently. Um, and so it's a video each Monday um, that they can go ahead and watch and then with each video will be a PDF um, that they'll actually fill out. You can literally assign it as homework because I know of signing homework right now. We're trying to figure that out as well. Um, <laughs> and the goal of the homework assignment is to have a creative conversation um, where they're actually planning activities that happen again now and when they get back. Um, so we're releasing that tomorrow. But uh, like I said, I have the link out right now. You can literally sign up right now, um, assuming the website works, which I think it does. Um, <laughs> you can go ahead and sign up right now. We're going to start sending out videos literally on Monday. You'll probably see it blasted everywhere tomorrow um, and then final thing is as you're going through this if you do need help with anything or your students are struggling with a concept please email me um, more than happy to help with that but like I said we just wanted to provide resources to schools um, free uh, because that's 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 what this time is about so I uh, appreciate Jeff the small amount of time absolutely yeah um, everyone's saying it worked the link works hooray hooray they're excited hooray. Um, all right we, we're uh, we're getting out of here uh, just before eight o'clock perfect right on the one hour mark this presentation is being recorded and will be available for viewing. So if your good friend over at your neighboring high school did not get a chance to watch this tonight and they want to hear all these great ideas, this will be posted tomorrow at cata1.org slash corona. That is our uh, resource page that we've been throwing all the free stuff that our uh, sponsors and our affiliates and our partner organizations have been offering up. So check out that site. Lots of great stuff posted there. Um, and then uh, we will also have the slideshow that is here this evening as well. That'll be posted alongside with the videos. I want to send a big thank you to Richard, Stacy, Margie, Jill, and Derek, as well as a little bit of Scott for jumping in here and sharing all of their amazing ideas with us. Um, sending great vibes out to everybody in the state of California as we navigate these uncharted waters over the next couple months. And um, even into summer, it's going to be a little uncharted for us as well. Um, and then uh, hoping we get back to some normalcy in the fall, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Stay safe, stay at home, and uh, continue to distance yourselves so that we can kick this thing and uh, get back to a normal life. We want to see each other. We want to hug each other. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight, and uh, give your family a hug. I'm Jeff Culver. This has been the Cata Zoom web event. Whee! All right, I'm sorry that you had to witness that. <laughs> Good night, everybody.